Praise the Lord, everybody. We need to start firing. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. If you're a mother, if you're not, you can wait. Amen. I have I, I have my brother here, um, and I just want him to know that he did not make my mother a mother. All right. If my twin brother was here. I have to let him know he did not make my mother a mother. I did it. That's right. She's a mother because of me. Amen. So, I mean, I know it's Mother's Day, but I, I think I get a little pat on my back, too. Amen. I, I, had, I took a part in that. Amen. So, I also would like to say happy Mother's Day to my wife. She is not here. I've already been threatened. Even though she's not here, I love her. I love her dearly. She's the mother of my children. I miss her. I hope you're getting all this, honey. She's watching this on live stream. Amen. Yes, I need to get something. Uh, uh, and I plan on getting this out of here quick enough so that we can get to the restaurants before everybody else does. So um, I won't be long. But if you go to the book of St. Matthew, chapter 18. Sisters, we're sorry for not having cooked something for you. We had a little hiccup, but amen. Next time, next time. Oh, it's going to be something. <laughs> Amen. St. Matthew chapter 18, verses 6 through 9. I'll read it and then we'll go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 6 through 9. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offenses, the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet be cast into everlasting fire. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes be cast into hell fire. Then in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 Timothy 4, 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Second Thessalonians chapter number 2, verses 2 and 3, and then we'll drop down to verse 15. Verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. In verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold to the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by our epistles. And I just would like to use for a subject this morning from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 2. Be not shaken or troubled. He talks here, uh, Jesus is giving us some examples of what it is and what it will require for us to be saved. He says that there will come offenses yes. in this life. All right. 
you don't have to be the one to offend, but it's going to happen. He said it, it needs be, it must happen because God's people cannot be uh, molded, they cannot be shaped, they cannot be what God wants them to be without there being some friction in our lives. Amen. We don't like it. No. We don't want it. We, en we enjoy the idea of it. We, we like to tell people, yes, this is a trying way and I've gone through many troubles serving the Lord, but when it's on us, we're crying and whining and carrying on like something terrible has happened. So there's a difference between enjoying the idea of suffering for the Lord and it being a practical thing in your life when you actually do suffer for the Lord. But the word offense, I think, has been greatly misused. What the Bible talks about here when it says offenses must come, he's talking about, it's an archaic word that's been kind of changed over time. Let me give you an example. There was a time when the word gay meant happy, but it doesn't mean that today. We've changed, society has changed what that word means. So if you go back a certain number of years and you see that word, it means something different than it does today. The word offense means something different now than it did when the Bible was translated. Offense was, I don't know if anyone's ever had mice and bought a mouse trap, but uh, you know, there's a little thing that you put the uh, peanut butter on. If you ever get mice, you, know, you don't, don't they, they, on cartoons, they always use cheese. Forget the cheese. Put you some peanut butter on there. And don't put a whole lot. Because if you put a whole lot, they can get to it. And they'll get it and they'll lick it all the way down till it's nothing. But just put enough on there to make them want to dig into it. Not that I know from experience. <laughs> That little thing that you put the cheese on, uh, it, it's an archaic word that they translated offense. That was the part where you got trapped. It was where the bait was placed for the trap to work. So Jesus is not talking about somebody hurting your feelings. Offense is coming is when someone puts bait out to trap you into doing wrong. Who shall ever trap one of these? If you're the person that goes around bothering with God's people, trying to get them to leave church, said it'd be better for you. Now, he, he, I'll admit that Jesus did go a little mafia now. <laughs> better for you to have a millstone. That was a heavy rock tied around your neck and somebody throw you out in the, in the sea than for you to bother with my people. And just because you don't see it happen now doesn't mean it's not going to happen. When, 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 when God says something, it's going to happen. The Bible talks about angels that are in chains reserved for judgment. In chains. They're not in chains yet. But as far as God is concerned, it's going to happen no matter what. You can't stop it from happening. So he can call those things that be not as though they were. He can say, you bet it was better for you to be dead than to mess with one of mine. Go ahead and mess with them. And just because you walk away and lightning didn't strike you doesn't mean that you ain't got a millstone tied around your neck. We look at people different. We look at people as if they're just one of us. But when you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, you're a little bit different than other folks. God categorizes you different. He says that you become one of my children. 
And if you bother with my children, I'm going to get you. The world looks at us and they say, you just like me. You put your pants on one leg at a time, just like I do. But don't be fooled. It's not like that. You keep on bothering with God's people and all you're doing is helping them to be what God wants them to be. But you're only condemning your own self into trouble that you can never get out of. It needs be that offenses come. It needs be that people try to trick you. Because God wants to know, or wants you to know, that you serve him because you want him. Amen. 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 My wife has told me on multiple occasions that men have made passes at her. And she didn't take the bait. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that. But here's the thing. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about her running out on me and tiptoeing out on me and getting somebody. I'm not worried about that because I know her. And she don't want, I got like two or three hundred dollars. She don't want to leave all that. In all seriousness now, in all seriousness My relationship to my wife means nothing if nobody else wants her. I can say my wife loves me and she would never leave me. But if there's no if there's no man that's ever made a pass at her. Let's just talk. Hope y'all see where I'm going with this. Because we say we love God. But unless somebody comes along and tries to get you to leave God, there's no proof that you really love him. It's just talk. And God needs more than just talk. He needs people that love him, that's willing to serve him and stick with him no matter what the circumstances are. Amen. We've been through some some things, my wife and I. We have been through some difficult times and we stuck by each other amen I don't want to make it look like she's the only one in the in the 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 mix in the formula that's sticking by amen she have done some things you know to get oh 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 lord no people get on each other's nerves amen if you get married and you think that you're not going to get on each other's nerves then don't get married amen Amen. Just stay single and want to be married. But you in for some real trouble if you if you think once you get married, nah. The troubles have ceased. Smooth sailing. Amen. This is not a Mother's Day message, is it? Amen. It's a message. All right. It's not like that. But if the first time my wife burned the bacon, I ran out on her. There's a problem with our relationship. If the first time trouble come your way and you walk out on God, there was something wrong with your relationship anyway. And so he he, he says it like this, wherefore. Wherefore means because of this, then because of Offenses will come because there's going to be those who are trying to trap you and trying to get you to walk away from God. Amen. I've heard all kinds of things being used, all kinds of tools being used. Why would you go to a church that don't let you do this when other churches do let you do this? But other churches that's letting you do what the Bible says you shouldn't do is not really a church. That's just where folk get together and talk about God. That's all. If what you're being taught is not helping you live holy, helping you to live the kind of life that God is expecting, something is wrong with the church. So if you love me, if you want to be right with me, and trouble comes... Whatever it is that's causing you to trouble, cut it off. Mm -hmm. 
Wherefore, because of this, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, if your hand keeps touching stuff it shouldn't touch, stay away from whatever it is that you're touching. Now, he ain't, he's not literally talking about cutting your hand off, but cutting off access to whatever it is. If you got a problem stealing, don't go into the room where they got the honesty box where they're selling candy. Stay away from that. Leave candy alone. Does that make sense? If you got a problem with pickpocketing and you can't help it, then stay away from where people are. You got to cut off whatever it is that's causing you to be wrong with God. You like, you like smoking weed? Then don't let your feet walk down the street where the weed seller is. Walk on by. Amen. Dion Warwick said it best. Walk on by. You see somebody that's a temptation to you? Go somewhere else. There was a sister in this church that got married to somebody that wasn't her husband. And, the, and at that time they told her, well, you know, you need to get a divorce and stay away from him. She said, I loved him. She told me that. She said, I loved him. But he lived over on First Street. I never went on First Street again after that. She said, I would go all the way around because that's where the man lived that I loved and he wasn't mine. She said, I wanted to be right with God. I mean, you got to cut off whatever it is that's causing you to not want to serve God. Wherever the trap is, wherever the bait is, you got to walk away and stay away from it. Better for you to get to heaven having never walked up First Street again than to keep walking up First Street and fall into sin. Hey man, let me get back onto my point. He said, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, that's the time we're living in right now. We're living in the latter times. And I've heard preachers misquote this. They'll say that that day shall not come except there be a great falling away. It doesn't say that. It says except a falling away first. Ex Amen. Uh, um, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And the Bible speaks specifically about three different types of doctrines. There's the doctrines of devils that's here in First Timothy. There's the doctrine of men which includes the doctrine of vanities and the doctrine of the Pharisees. And then there's also the doctrine of Christ which includes the doctrine of God, the doctrine of baptisms, and the doctrine of the Lord. All of that's encompassed in the doctrine of Christ. And that's where we get the apostolic doctrine, which is what we teach. That is the doctrine that the apostles taught, which was what they learned from Jesus. And so we took the word apostles and then said, well, to be a follower of the apostles means that you are apostolic. We didn't make the word up. It's been around for a long time. Amen. But we teach, we believe in the apostles' doctrine because the apostles taught what Jesus taught and Jesus taught from the Old Testament. So it's not a matter of you pick a testament that you like. It's not like that. Amen. Norman Schwarzkopf, when we first went to the Persian Gulf, he said everybody that's mad wants to be an Old Testament Christian. Because then you can kill somebody, but everybody that's done something to make somebody mad is a New, Test a New Testament Christian because they want forgiveness. Amen. We don't get to pick a testament. You eat the whole loaf or leave it all alone. They gave heed. He said, some are departing from God. Some are departing from the faith, which is talking about salvation. Some people are walking away from salvation. Why? Because they're listening to seducing spirits. But if your ear offends you, cut it off. If the let, let, me, let me just be real clear, and I'm, I'm bringing it to an end. Just, just consider this. Where do seducing spirits come from? Social media. I mean, we didn't have folks with all these crazy ideas 40 years ago because they didn't have a way to get their own idea out there. But today, anybody that has an idea can get online, 
and tell everybody what their idea is. And I've seen people smoking cigarettes talking about God. I've seen people using profanity preaching. And not just a little profanity, cussing up a storm. I think they would embarrass a sailor. I don't know why sailors got a bad name for that. Hey Amen. I think maybe the Marine Corps. They're supposed to be the toughest of all of them. I think they would use bad language. Terrible, 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 terrible language. And the whole time trying to tell people about God. Hey Amen. But it doesn't have to be just that. Social media gives every weirdo an opportunity to tell you what they think about God. I'm not trying to butter it up, y'all. There are some strange folks on YouTube. Just go look. There are some strange folks tweeting. Yeah, how you work? Seriously? You going to get somebody saved in a, in a little short message like that? That's not what God is looking for. If it was, the Bible wouldn't be this thick. Look at this. It's that thick because there's more to it than just a 240 character message. I'm tweeting. I want people to know that Jesus is real. Well, you better get more than 240 characters. Amen. They're giving heed to seducing spirits. They're giving heed to doctrines of devils. Amen. Did you notice that was plural? Not the doctrine of the devil, but doctrines of the devil. You know why? Because there's so many different doctrines that the devil has. So many different ways to get folks, to trap folks, to trick people. Here's, I, I, I had a card, I forgot it. I had a card that talks about salvation from a church that we went to. And on that card it talks about Jesus' death and they give scriptures. Then they talk about Jesus' burial and resurrection and they give scriptures. They talk about... Uh, the, the necessity of baptism and they give some scriptures and then they on the back it says now if you want to be saved just say this I said well where's the scriptures do you really think that God would leave salvation up to just say this oh it's far deeper than that but that's doctrines of devils it sounds good it makes you feel good. Oh, I know I'm right because I confess the Lord. I know I'm right because I did this. I know I'm right. Really? You should know you're right because you've been obedient to this. Amen. All right, let me, let me get to my point here. That you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled. Now, the reason why um, Paul is writing this to the church at Thessalonica is because there are some things that we talk about that scare people. It's frightening to think that God could be coming soon that, that, or that you even missed it already. Hey Amen. I have, I have done that before. I forgot what it was that happened. I went to sleep and I had a dream. Something happened. I don't know what it was. And I woke up and I thought the raptures took place and I missed it. So the first thing I did was call the pastor and got his voicemail. Now I'm in a state of panic. I started calling around everybody that I thought was living right until somebody answered the phone and was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> See, that, don't, that's the kind of stuff that'll trouble your mind. But when you're living, I couldn't think of anything I did wrong, but it was like, oh, Lord, I'd have missed it. You know, sometimes you just get a feeling that come over you. Hey, Amen. I don't want to say it was the devil, but it was a feeling. I was shaken in my mind because I thought I might have missed this thing. Yes, right. Paul said, "Don't not listen. I'm telling you that the Lord is coming. Okay. And he talks about it in chapter 4 about how the dead in Christ shall rise first. And he goes into this thing about how the catching away of the saints is going to take place. But don't let that get you so shook up that you walk away from God. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't be troubled in mind. Don't let it shake your confidence in God because you don't understand it. There are some things that God says that has never happened before, but it's real. 
When he told Noah, build an ark because it's going to rain. It had never rained before. There was no need for boats. What do you need a boat for when it's never rained? I mean, God watered the earth from below. The Bible says that a, a, a mist came up from below and he watered the ground with that. Hey, man, that seems hard for us to understand that there was no rain because we're so used to it. But uh, if God said it happened, it happened. All right, and then he says, now there's going to come a time when all of those that's been living right, that's been holy, that have followed what I have said, there's going to come a time when if you have died, I'm going to raise you up. And if you're still alive, I'm going to catch all of y'all up together. That doesn't make sense. It's kind of scary. So, but don't let that shake you up. Don't let it happen, neither by spirit nor by word. Don't let nobody get you shook up over this. Because there are people who will come and try to make you think that that seems silly. You got to hang on to it. And then he goes on, he says, as that the day of Christ is at hand. It is at hand. We're living in the time now where it is at hand. But let me just jump down to verse 15. Therefore, because you know God is coming, stand fast. We're jumping after every wind of doctrine today. We got all kind of preachers online that we like to watch and listen to. I don't listen to none of them. If they're not, there's only a couple of preachers I look at and I know what they're preaching is apostolic doctrine and it's right. I know that because it matches everything I've been taught. Everything that I know the fathers taught. I know that. So I watch them. I'm not looking at all these other jackleg preachers. I don't care how many degrees they have. I don't care how well they can talk. I don't care how much sense it makes. If you're not preaching truth, I'm not interested. Somebody said one time, well, all you got to do is pick the bones out of it. I don't want to pick bones out. I just want truth. And if I have to sit and listen carefully to everything you say, I'm not interested in listening. I heard somebody, one of the saints sent me a video clip. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm almost finished. So they sent me a video clip of something, and it made so much sense. They said, what do, you, what do you think about it? I said, that sounds so good. Sounds so right. He was talking about, I forget who exactly what it was all about, but he said, you know, that if you want a wife to be a good thing, you have to make her a good thing. And he goes into it, and he's like, if you want your wife to be healthy, then you be healthy. You eat the right things and encourage your wife to eat the right things. If you want her to not be overweight, then, then you exercise with her. And he's going down through this whole thing. He's like, well, you know, that makes a lot of good common sense. But show me in the Bible where it says that. Because what I can show you is where the Bible says he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. It's not the husband's job to make her a good thing. She ought to be one already. So I sent that back and said, this is nothing but foolishness. Sounded good. Everybody was up clapping. Woo! They was excited. I said, ooh, that sounds real good, but it's off. Stand fast on what you've been taught. Hold the traditions. And I, now, he says it two different ways, whether by word or our epistle. And what he's talking about here is whether it's something that you read in the Bible or something that you've been taught, hang on to that. We're looking for all the reasons why we shouldn't do what they used to do. Hey Amen. People don't tarry for the Holy Ghost no more. Yeah. Well, first of all, the word tarry means to wait. They start going down through this long explanation of junk. And it's like, I don't care. People got the Holy Ghost. And now you want to change it all up and say, well, that was wrong. Yeah, well, it worked. Why would God fill people with the Holy Ghost if they was doing it wrong? <laughs> I hope y'all see. And some things that people teach just doesn't make sense. Amen. Amen. Hold on to what you've been taught. And I'm not, y'all know me, I don't teach that what things that the rules that we have in the church 
is a heaven or hell issue. Those are just rules in the church. Don't bring no McDonald's bag up in here full of food. That's not in the Bible, but I'm just telling you, that's our church. That's our tradition. Our tradition is you don't eat. Just wait, go back out to your car and eat, or go back over to McDonald's and eat, or sit outside and eat, but whatever, don't bring no bags of food in here and eat. That's not in the Bible. That's our tradition. Hold on to the traditions that you've been taught. Hallelujah. See, the world will tell you what your church teaches that y'all can't eat, but we can eat in our church, so why are you going over there? Hang on to your traditions. Hang on to what's right. Hang on to the word. Hang on to what's been taught. Do it, and you'll be okay. Don't do it, and then you'll face God. And you know what? Just like Jesus said, better to enter into heaven with your leg cut off than to go to hell whole. Now, he does not saying that when you get to heaven, if you had a broken leg or a cut off arm or you was born without a leg, that when you get there, you're not going to have it. That's not what he's saying at all. What he's talking about is it's better for you to sacrifice something now for the sake of I want to be right. Because it's far better, if I can say it in a more modern way, far better. Oh, let me just let me just make some folks mad, and then I'm gonna sit down. Then you'll be glad that I'm done. Let's say you're dating. Far better to keep your lips off that woman that you're dating, and get to heaven and find out y'all could have kissed. It was all right. You didn't miss much. Far better to do that than to say I don't see nothing wrong with it. And when the rapture takes place, you stuck right here because you was kissing and shouldn't have been. Does that make sense? Yes, I mean, and I know there's some folks in here that's dating or want to date and that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm not trying to make nobody really mad. But the bottom line is this. Far better to go without and find out you didn't need to than to go on and do it and find out that God expected you not to do it. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. We, we got a hold to what we've been taught. Yes. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. But you got to be like the men at Thessalonica. He said these men are more noble than, than those in Berea. Or maybe I got that backwards. The men of Berea is more noble than those in Thessalonica. In that when they heard the word, yes. they received it with all readiness of heart. And search the scriptures daily to see if those things be. Go on and take the preacher's word and look in the Bible and see. If it's not lining up with the Bible, it's time to get a preacher that does line up with the Bible. Amen. 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 All right. Come on, Elder Conference.